Chicago. Mm -hmm. In this position, Paul Morphy saw that if Black ever had a chance to move his bishop out, that all he had to do was go right here to say checkmate. But Black, of course, isn't going to do that. Black had to find something else to do. However, in this position, it is White's move, not Black's. And so if White came down to take that and say check, Black would simply remove the White Rook, the pawn would take, the king would take the remaining white pawn, and now he would escort his pawn down to g8, the bottom of the board, so he could promote it to a queen, and black would win with a king, a queen, against the lone white king. And Paul Morphy didn't want to lose. So I'm going to set the position back up, and let's see what did Paul Morphy do, Morphy do in this position. So again, in this position, it is white to move and not lose. Matter of fact, it will be white to move and win. Well, let's see how he did it. He brought his rook down and didn't take the pawn. He put it right there in front of both pawns. But wait a minute. Black could take the rook and try to win. Well, if he does... White doesn't take this pawn. White brings his pawn down and says, checkmate. Because the king is trapped behind his own pieces, even though he would have a bishop and two queens if he could promote them, except that he is in checkmate. Very deep and yet very simple. Let's look at it one more time. Put the pieces back where they were. In this position, it was Paul Morphy's move, and he simply went right here, forcing Black to take the rook. You say, well, wait a minute. He doesn't have to take the rook. He could move the bishop here, maybe, or way down here. Well, then a simple checkmate that way. So whether... Black takes the rook and is checkmated. Or if he tries to do something else, he still gets checkmated. So the sacrifice of the rook is what Paul Morphy's goal was in order to not lose, but to actually win by simply sacrificing the rook and getting the checkmate. What a brilliant player. Thank you. For